Hi, I'm Sanjay Shukla, President and Chief uh, Executive Officer of Atire Pharma. Uh, I'm a drug development physician who has been in drug development and clinical trials research for approximately 25 years. Um, my passion has really been around developing new therapies in rare disease. How do we basically create better therapies for rare disease patients? Taking it a step further, uh, when you look at uh, diversity with regard to um, underserved populations, uh, and that can include um, communities of color um, or even um, children or even uh, elderly populations. Uh, this, there are special, special groups there that require uh, a different level of understanding um, on how you basically advance and create new therapies. For sarcoidosis, the area we work in uh, I was exposed to sarcoidosis as a medical student, learned more about it uh, at Howard University in Washington, D.C. So I was fortunate to learn quite a bit about sarcoidosis and some of the challenges that um, uh, the Black community in particular uh, deals with, with regards to sarcoidosis. Uh, now, 25 years forward, moving forward, uh, fortunate to have discovered a therapy that uh, might do some uh, amazing things for sarcoidosis patients. As we now get into more specialized and uh, different forms of lung disease, like pulmonary fibrosis, over the last 10 years, we've made uh, big strides in, in improving the lives of patients that have uh, these more severe forms of lung disease. So having in representation in clinical trials is important so that researchers like myself and then eventually doctors can look at the data produced and say, what's happening with this kind of patient or that kind of patient? How can it be useful? But without that participation in clinical trials, um, we never really are able to tease out um, these, uh, these benefit, these potential benefits. But as we get into, as I said, some of these more sophisticated, these more sort of rare diseases, it requires everyone as a community to work together and create a clinical trial that also fits the lifestyle of those patients so that they can participate in the trial. There have been a lot of historical reasons that I think in particular, uh, clinical trials have not been diverse. Uh, some of them are, we have to acknowledge, um, um, there's, there's some bad history there um, from decades ago. Uh, I think that's important to acknowledge that and put that front and center and say, uh, companies have done better to acknowledge that and be, be able to then now implement new trials that also um, customize uh, and make it easier for patients to participate. Uh, we've got to, as an industry, be very, very transparent around the potential positives of a therapy. We a lot of times talk about how this could do amazing things, but we also have to be very clear about what might be the challenges and also monitor these sort of things actively. The second part is as we gain information and learn about the potential benefits, we may need to be open about them and say, here's what we see. And typically what companies should do is publish this in uh, peer reviewed medical journals. So other people and other doctors and patients can look at this and then make a determination on whether or not they wanna participate in future trials. All along the way, it's very important is, is when you build that trust to also be able to talk about um, that sort of benefit risk of the drug. So for example, our therapy modulates the immune system. So it's important to tell folks the things I might be concerned about are things like infection risk, things like that. This is what we monitor going all the way back to the healthy volunteers. And then let's give frequent updates this is what we're seeing. It's trending well. That then builds more confidence, the more transparent you can be. Um, the other component is I think really listening, as I alluded to with some things around logistics, listening to what patients need to make their entry into a clinical trial easier. Things like, hey, do you need um, uh, travel uh, covered? Uh, do you need time to uh, more time to get to our center? We have patients sometimes that would like to fly, be involved in our trial. They live quite 
a ways away from a major hospital center. How can we help with logistical planning of sometimes even flying you there? Um, we want to basically make it as easy as possible so their lives are not disrupted um, because they are giving a huge commitment in, in participating in the trial. Uh, and that's important for companies to say, you're part of a journey here that you want to be open and, and build that trust. It sometimes involves where if things sometimes just don't work out, you still put that information out. That way, um, their commitment uh, really meant something. I see participation um, from the Black community as essential to solve specific issues, um, uh, healthcare you know, inequities that may exist, even with existing therapies. Um, this is how we can actually uh, get better outcomes for all patients. Um, having that participation um, involves, you know, a multi-pronged trust approach. My goal here at ATIRE is sarcoidosis is a therapy that uh, win, lose, or draw, whatever happens in this trial, we are making huge strides here, even in the way that we are rethinking the design of trials. Uh, we are really attacking uh, drugs like steroids, uh, which for a long time are cheap and available, but they create a lot of bad, bad things uh, for the community. Uh, increases obesity, hypertension, diabetes. In my mind, uh, it's not good enough to have a patient have to make that choice uh, that these are all the side effects you're going to have to deal with to, in order to sort of live your life with this uh, with this disease. So I think even in the way that you design trials and how you basically say, this is what we really are going after um, and make it really more patient centric. Um, when I think about some of the patients, uh, you know, I knew uh, when I practiced in the black community, you can talk about things like lung function. But I think what a lot of folks want is better quality of life. They want to cough less, have less shortness of breath, and they also don't want to have this therapy that causes a lot of toxicity in their bodies. It's important for industry um, to listen to, to patients, directly listen to the patients that uh, you're trying to create a therapy for. Um, so I do think that um, there are um, more strides to be made, but recently I think there are some examples where uh, great things are happening specifically um, in black um, for the black community with regards to healthcare. So how do we, we communicate uh, um, success uh, or for that matter, even failures? Um, I think, again, it's about being transparent first from a technical standpoint. Once you have the data, uh, once you see what happens in a clinical trial, clinical trial no matter the results, publish that, that information. We've been fortunate that we've published really good um, uh, data from our last trial, which I think is uh, transforming the way th people think about sarcoidosis. But not all companies um, in, in different diseases um, have that view. Um, there are regulators around the world that are pushing more uh, pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies to publish everything that they have. It starts there. Uh, and I think uh, I've always believed in that uh, and historically have always pushed no matter where I've been, let's get that information out so the medical community can really absorb it. But then after that, what are the messages? What are the lessons learned? That's where you have to sit down with patients and say, this is what we learned um, and perhaps speak a less technical language around this is what happened with your with uh, force vital capacity in this trial to be able to say, here's what we saw. This is what happened to patients in that trial. And then that in better informs individuals around what might happen afterwards, or even maybe ways, a new direction, even their current therapies uh, might wanna be used. From my experience recently with sarcoidosis, I have reflected around my time, again, going back to my training in Washington, DC uh, at Howard. Um, I'm very grateful in many ways of the uh, education I received. And I can't help but think um, in some ways um, uh, I'm giving back by being able to at least create um, new research in an area that's very, very relevant um, uh, to the black population. Um, I would say that it wasn't deliberate in the sense that this is a therapy that um, 
I was immediately thinking about sarcoidosis when it was in the early stages, just in, in the research, in the test tubes and in the Petri dish, you're not thinking of it that way. But I do think that my, the awareness and the experience I had um, got me at least aware that this therapy could be useful. Um, so much of our lives, if we have more experiences and we have more awareness, I think we have greater uh, empathy um, to um, all kinds of aspects of, of, of the world. Uh, in, in my instance, healthcare, opening up my eyes from experiences 25 years ago, it just was in the back of my mind that, oh, this is something that might be useful, but now let's test it in a very sort of logical and open manner. Uh, and it may actually, um, you know, get us there. So that commitment that I, that I have, um, uh, I, I have been reflecting on that recently. Um, and just to play a part in advancing the science here uh, will be um, a great accomplishment, I think. So I, I encourage everybody to, you know, you find your commitment, you find your passion. Uh, sometimes it's it's uh, born out of a seed that was planted 25 years ago, um, just, just from learning something new. Uh, I am Dr. Sanjay Shukla, and I am now included. Uh, join me in redefining health equity through clinical research. Thank you.